Okay, so the topic tonight officially is issues in marking history. Yom HaShoah and Yom HaAtzmaut. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware of, Yom HaShoah and Yom HaAtzmaut are not universally observed in the Jewish world. Okay, there, for both of the of these dates, there was tremendous controversy about their establishment and their continued observance. Okay, and that applies to Yom HaShoah and Yom HaTzmaut. Okay, Yom HaTzmaut, you know that there are members of the Orthodox world who do not mark Yom HaTzmaut, Israel Independence Day. Okay, within Orthodoxy, there are issues of whether you say Hallel, you don't. Um, to many Orthodox Jews, Yom Ha'atzmaut is like any other day. It's not distinguished whatsoever, okay, in terms of anything within Jewish practice. Um, the, you know, so the point is, is that uh, part of that issue is, is the acceptance of marking a secular day or marking perspective, okay? There may be people who say, yeah, Yom Ha'atzmaut is a day that I'll recognize in a certain way, the same way that I'll recognize um, um, Independence Day, United States. Or let's say in terms of a lot of the Jewish community in the United States, they celebrate Thanksgiving because they're good Americans and it has some kind of validity and so forth, but it doesn't have religious significance. So the point exists in terms of Yom Ha'atzmaut, is it a distinguished day? And even if you say it's distinguished with, uh, within the Jewish world, is it distinguished only secularly, or is it distinguished religiously? This is an issue that also exists with Yom HaShoah. Um, is Yom HaShoah, is it to be distinguished, uh, you know, it's a, it actually is distinguished in the Israeli calendar. There's a specific day, Yom HaShoah, which has certain secular observances in Israel. For example, uh, I think at midday in, in Israel, everyone you know, gets, you know, basically gets out of the car and observes a minute of silence in a regular year. Yom HaShoah is part of the Israeli calendar. That is as a secular In the religious world, you have a very similar controversy. There are many, many voices within the within the, within the, the religious world that states that Yom HaShoah should not have any religious significance because the day we mark tragedies is Tishu B'Av, and um, th that was that's actually. I can't say every, but, but a tremendous amount of, 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 um, uh, of, religious, uh, of religious leaders declared that the day we have to mark the Holocaust is Tishu B'Av, the ninth day of Av. And in fact, there was movement in the late 70s from Menachem Begin to basically discount Yom HaShoah, to take it off the calendar in Israel and make Tishu B'Av basically the day of uh, that, that we should mark the Holocaust. One of the most powerful voices in that effect was Rabbi Soloveitchik. Okay, um, you know, the Rav. He basically was very adamant that Tisha B'Av should be marked, that, that, that the Holocaust should be marked on Tisha B'Av. It's also the position of Hudner, it's also the position of Moshe Feinstein. It was basically a pretty strong position within the Orthodox world Um, that the day we should mark tragedies from history is Tisha B'Av, and we should not have a separate date for, for the Shoah. So, like I said, it, it's a controversy and so forth. Um, the, the, the point is, is what it really raises is what is the factors involved in marking history. Okay, so the, the, the point is, I'm looking at this from a larger perspective in terms of 
what is involved, or what do, what do we do when we mark history? And what, what, what's the point of marking history? So let me ask you, what holiday do we celebrate for Yeshua's conquest of Eretz Israel? Right, the conquest of Israel by Joshua. Okay, what, what, what holiday do we celebrate to, to mark that date? Anyone got a holiday marking that date? Does anyone even know the date that Yeshua conquered Israel? Okay, let's take another date. What I would think would be pretty significant within Jewish history. Okay, the construction of the temple by Solomon. Okay, what holiday do we have today to celebrate the construction of the base of Mikdash, the first base of Mikdash by Shlomo Melech? You raise your hand and just say, hey. We celebrate um, tragedy, tragic holidays, and not uh, memorial events like uh, the building of the temple. Okay, or, so so. Uh, and so and the the right, right, right. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, so let's talk about tragedies. We we really celebrate. We really mark tragedies, right? Yeah. What was the date of the split of the kingdoms between Yehuda and Yisrael? When did that happen? How was that marked? Okay. The splitting of... of, uh, of so they're marked historically. Yeah, yeah. Tell me the date. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. Stephen. What, what does that mean? It's marked historically, not religiously. That's, you know, you're, you're throwing out terms. The point is, is what we want to do is define these terms. Okay, what we're trying to do is... What I'm pointing out is that you're right. The two cases I pointed out were days which would be celebrations. So therefore, you're saying, well, we, we don't do historical celebrations. Well, we actually do historical celebrations. Anyone here know of holidays which we celebrate historical events? We just celebrated one. It's called the holiday of Pesach. Right? We supposedly celebrate leaving and getting out of Egypt. It's another one coming up in a few weeks. It's called Shavuot. It's a day we celebrate getting the Torah. There's other ones, okay? You want to go into the rabbinic ideas, okay? So we mark tragedies from the rabbinic perspective from the destruction of the from the destruction of the temple, okay? But um, we didn't mark Bar Kokhba's I mean, there's issues in terms of marking Bar Kokhba's rebellion. There's some people who try to tie it to Svira and so forth, but we don't really mark when Bar Kokhba lost, but we do mark the destruction of the temple. But there's other two dates that we don't celebrate in terms of Jewish history. Um, anyone here call, here have a holiday called Hanukkah? What does that celebrate? It's a historical event. The truth is, is that it's a very, very difficult historical event to actually take. Okay, what exactly was it? Okay, we talk about the miracle in the base of Mikdash and so forth, but it's... It, but it also was tied to the Shabbat kingdom, why would we celebrate that establishment of that kingdom? And there's tremendous controversy about that. That's one of the reasons that Hanukkah was actually an issue. We're going to get to that in a sec. There's another holiday. Anyone have another holiday we celebrate historical events? It's called Purim. So the truth of the matter is, is just is that I threw out these cases, but the fact is, what I'm really pointing out, is that there are certain dates which we mark historic which are certain historical dates which we mark and mark into the it, it, mark religiously for um, uh, I'm not going to say eternity but for posterity we all celebrate Purim this year right we all celebrate a Purim and there's other historical events which were clearly significant historical events which we didn't mark and the question arose with, with, with Yom Ha'atzmut and Yom HaShoah, that's really what happened. The question is, is when are events in history marked? And that was a lot of the controversy. And part of the issue is what you were leading to, Stephen, is that Yom HaShoah and Yom HaTzmaut really came out of the secular world. Okay? The point is, 
is that, as, but I'm not going to define it as only secular, but the point is, is that it, we, it, was, it was really a lot of the motivation for those events have a lot to do with their acceptance within the secular world. Yom Ha'atzmau was a celebration of Israel's Independence Day, which went beyond just the religious and non-religious or, 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 or so forth, but basically marked Israel. Yom HaShoah was a tragedy for the entire Jewish community and basically is accepted by the, is, is marked by the Jewish community. It's more marked by the non-religious because there are a lot of religious and of course it should be included in Tisha B'Av. Okay, we already have a day to mark tragedy. The point is, is, is that does the Holocaust demand its own significant day? That's really what the issue is about in certain ways. And that tells you about how you look at history. What is history about? Or how do we relate to history? Okay, so that, that, that seems to be what, what, I, what I want to sort of approach today. What is our connection in a certain way with, with history? Um, with, 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 these, with these events. There's a further issue with Yom HaShoah. Yom HaShoah was celebrated today. It was the 27th day of Nisan. I'm sort of throwing this out. <laughs> this is kind of, this is, this is the way, you know, you sort of wish you had a little bit more uh, dialogue and so forth. Does anyone know what happened on the 27th of Nisan that made it the, the, the day to mark Yom HaShoah? Just waiting for Harold. Harold knows. Okay. okay. He's muted. He's muted. Right? Okay, fine. Let me let me just let me let me tell you. A lot of people tie it to the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Okay. The point is, is does anyone really know what the anniversary date is for the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising? When it actually began. What the actual date was. It's the date of Yom Hashoah is the twenty seventh day of this one. The date that actually began Yom HaShoah, uh, sorry, it actually began the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was the 15th of this. And originally when there was talk of establishing Yom HaShoah, okay, the argument, the first argument in, in, in terms of the discussion in the Knesset was it should be established on the 15th day of this. The problem is, is the 15th day of this already is, is Yes, thank you. It's Pesach. So the point is, is <laughs> there's whole issue because most think of people think of Pesach, but people don't recognize Pesach is the 15th day of Nisan. So there are people <laughs> arguing we should establish Yom HaShoah on the in commemoration of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, and the and the idea of uh, of the 15th day of Nisan. The problem was <laughs> people didn't people didn't think twice and said, wait a second, that's Pesach. You can't do it in Pesach. So they had to try and figure out what other dates they were going to do. And there was another controversy. There are two other controversies concerning Yom HaShoah. Its official name was Yom HaShoah V'Hagvura. And there was a reason why it was connected to the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Because there was an attitude by many Israelis that was very negative towards the Holocaust. Because they felt the Jews should have fought. And therefore, there was a certain movement that we really are commemorating with the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was the Jews who fought, was the uprising. And that really tied into Eretz Israel and building up Eretz Israel and fighting for Eretz Israel. There was that kind of, of movement. I read somewhere actually that these, the, the Sabra's relationship. Survivors was very, very difficult for many years, years because they felt that that the Jews should have fought back. It changed with the Eichmann trial, okay? Because the Eichmann trial finally showed the, the finally showed in Eretz Yisrael what it was really like, and there and there was a certain amount of greater empathy for what the Jews felt in in, in, in Europe. 
But it was. But the point is, is that there was there was a side to Yom Hashoah where it's not really marking the tragedy alone. But it was arguing that we also want to mark the heroes, such as the people in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, who did fight back. The point is, there was another issue that was tied to Yom Hashoah. Yom Hashoah is in the month of Nisan, and it would be a day to mark a tragedy. There was actually people. Not, you know, not religious, but you know, it should be a day of mourning. It should be mourning. The problem is, is that, is that in the month of Nissan, we don't do any mourning. The month of Nissan, there's a lot of a lot of, of limitations of what can be done in a funeral in the month of Nissan. We don't say Tachanun in the month of Nissan. So the point is, is that when you look at at, at So that, that that led people to think the appropriate day is Tishah B'av. Well, the question with Tishah B'av is that what would be the effect of having the Holocaust be connected with Tishah B'av? And there were two sides to that argument. One is that is that the Holocaust, because it's something that has affected us today, would basically become the focus and not. Okay, so people felt that if you would have had the Holocaust connected to Tishu B'av, it would it would drown out the significance of the destruction of the temples. There are other people who took the exact opposite viewpoint that Tishu B'av really would mark the destruction of the temples if Yom Hashoah was included in the destruction of, uh, of Tishu B'av, it would be lost in the in, in, in the focus on on on. on on the destruction of the temple. So there was a further argument that we want to have a significant day. The issue with that, though, is... Is, well, we can't... You know, obviously, the Holocaust is unique in terms of its tragedy. I mean, in, in no way can you compare the Holocaust to the other tragic events. I mean, I shouldn't say in no way, but the point is the Holocaust obviously stands out in terms of its horror. But the point is, is that the Jewish community, Rahman al son had a variety of horrors in, in Europe. Chmelnitsky. We didn't, a date to mark Chmelnitsky's massacres didn't occur, didn't, didn't happen within the Jewish calendar. Okay, the, 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 the attacks of the Crusades didn't come up, didn't, weren't marked in the Jewish calendar. There were keynotes that were interesting to, you know, statements of lamentation that came up in terms of Tishbub, but the point is the tragedies were all connected to Tishbub. So the point is, is why is it that other tragedies weren't given their significance? And then I pointed out the reason I brought up the thing of Yosha's conquest and the, and the building of the, uh, of the bias, even the building of, of the bias Shani, of the second temple, you can ask the question, why is that Jewish history did not mark those? Okay, and, and why did it mark why did it mark the, the you know Hanukkah? Why did it mark Purim? What exactly is going on? And that's and that really raises an interesting issue of why how we mark history from a from a Torah perspective. What really marks a holiday from a Torah perspective? So um, 200 years, uh, 200 years. What does that mean? I don't know what it means. I'm waiting for the explanation. Well, it no, takes uh, 200 uh, years for a holiday uh, to be accepted uh, uh, f fully. <clears throat> on the, uh, something like that. I don't know. Well, well, Stephen, where are you getting this from? From Barry. And he's not here. But somebody is here. TN is here. Who joined us? That's TN. Is that Barry? I don't know. Uh, I yes. Oh. I just joined. Okay. So, 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 Stephen, you're saying it takes 200 years. Do you know what you're talking like? Like, you're throwing no, out a no, statement and, and, and saying, okay, you're throwing out a statement. I, I'm, okay, what does 
that statement mean? Let, let Barry explain it. Barry, help me out. You're the one who said it to me. Barry's on here as the masked something or other. That's uh, his identity is hidden. Are you listening, Barry? Yes, I'm, I'm listening, but my mouth is full with food, so you don't really want me to talk. Okay. So let me take it from what, what, what I think Barry is, is, is mentioning. And actually, it's a significant idea. Stephen, you threw out the number 200 years. It's not 200 years. The fact is, it says by Hanukkah, that Hanukkah wasn't established for many, many years. Why? Because wh when would you establish a, a, um, um, a, a, a historical date? What's the point of establishing a historical date? So in our world, okay, we want to establish it right away. We're happy about something happening in history. And we want to establish it right away, okay? Or we're not happy about something happening in history, and we want to establish it right away. This, okay? In the Yom HaShoah, when we talk in terms of the Holocaust, we want, to, we want to state never again. So we want to create some idea that this, that this should be recognized or whatever and so forth. The point is is just because something happened in history does not necessarily mean that it's going to be remembered with the same significance. See, what happened with Hanukkah is really very, very significant in this regard. It was a great miracle that happened there. This oil lasted. But the point was, is you don't create a holiday because of the past. Okay? Hey, you know what happens to holidays are created because of the past? They're, they eventually go to Monday and then become a long weekend. Okay? How many people, you know, when I, was a, when I was a kid, <laughs> I was in grade eight and, it was, and, and, and I had to do a project, um, you know. And my project was going to be on the Fathers of Confederation. So there I am, the Fathers of Confederation, and I was talking, I was talking to my class. Was a great class, you know, grade eight kids in, in the Jewish day school in Ottawa, and it's very good and so forth. So I asked the class, okay, who's the first president of the United States? And of course, the, everyone broke out laughing, okay? Everyone knew who the first president of the United States was. I said, great, great, okay. And who was the first prime minister of? And you know what the you know what I got? Not one person in the class knew what the answer was. Okay. Now they didn't take Canadian history yet, but they all knew about about. Well, then it was called Dominion Day, and they knew they got a day off. Well, it was during the summer, so it doesn't matter. But they knew, you know, they got off Victoria Day. Okay. But the point was. That's that's, that's because that's because they were all liberals. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Um, the, the truth is, is that if, I think if you would mention to me, if you were to say that now to the people in that class, um, you'd be in big trouble. Okay, um, okay. The point is, is that they had no idea who John A. McDonald was, because the truth of the matter is, is does, does it really matter? George Washington being the first president of the United States is really matter. Did he really cut down an owl, a, a cherry tree or whatever? You know? The point, is, the point is, is that what really matters? In history, we know all these facts. But the point is, is that what happens is, commemorating a historical event has little value within Jewish thought. And that's what, and that's what is referring to Hanukkah. It was not to commemorate the 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 uh, the the, the uh, what happened on Hanukkah happened in history. There are other miracles that happen in history, other events. The question was: Is there an idea? 
is there a concept that I have to recognize for me to con continue thinking about in the future. Pesach is not, and, and everyone looks at this, Pesach, we say you have, to, you have to feel that you got out of Egypt. Pesach is not a commemoration of us leaving Egypt. Pesach is the time we have to re-experience what it meant to get out of Egypt. And that involves what it means in your mind to have this event be part of your consciousness. Okay? What does that mean? Okay? What, 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 what am I supposed to take away from this? Okay? Obviously, there's a certain value in terms of remembering things. But the point is, is that that value is much more temporal. And that's why, even in terms of remembering things, like you talk about the Chemenitsky, or you talk about, uh, you know, the Tav of Chemenitsky, or you talk about the, 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 the events that happened in, in the Crusades and so forth, Jewish communities, okay, Jewish communities, even during the in Europe, did establish a day to remember tragedies in their community. You go into a certain community in in, 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 in Europe, and they would have a certain day that, that 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 was necessary to know in that community. But the point was is that date was significant for people who experienced that event. The point is, is that, is, that, is that we who experience certain events have to, have to connect with those events. And we keep them in our memory because they're part of our psychological being. And that's not just in terms of the people who lived through that event, that's in terms of the people who are connected. I'm a Holocaust survivor. My father um, was very, very involved in Um, Harold, they're Harold. They're asking if you can turn off your your mic. Um, the 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 um. My father was very very involved in in, in Holocaust uh, in Holocaust memory. He was the chairman of the of the Ottawa Holocaust Committee. If you ever go to to uh, Ottawa. You'll see that in there, in, in, in the cemetery on Bank Street, there's a Holocaust memorial. My father, my father was very involved in, in creating that. He was a Holocaust survivor. I'm the child of a Holocaust survivor. It affects me psychologically. Okay? I know how it affects me psychologically. Okay? I, I recognize that. I learned through my life that I was affected by it. I am affected by the Holocaust. And the fact is, is that in my consciousness, it's important to mark it. Today, Yom HaShoah, I felt something. But that was something personal. That was an idea. The question that happens when you create a, a, a day on the Jewish calendar from a religious perspective is what exactly is the lesson you're supposed to take away with it. And that's hard. Pesach is not just commemorating it's understanding that you have to think about what a shift is from slavery to, to, to freedom, and that's not a simple, a simple movement. Okay? When we commemorate history, we're not commemorating history as a historical event. We're commemorating an idea that was expressed in this historical event that we have to bring into our present idea today. And I think that that was one of the issues that happened with Yom HaShoah. The question that exists is, is what Yom HaShoah represents. On a personal level, we were all, in this generation, more affected by the Holocaust than in a certain way we were affected by the... By, by the destructions of the Temple. We felt it, personal. It affected our psychology. But in terms of the significance as a religious idea, what we're supposed to think about, 
And what it has the standing, let's say, 2,000 years later, what we're supposed to take away from the fact that we don't have the, the temples, we don't have the basin, the, the Bate Mikdash from today, that's something that's supposed to affect us in our consciousness in terms of a religious idea. Judaism is very, very different without temples. Completely different. Somewhat very different without the Bate Mikdash. And the truth is, the tragedy that exists is very powerful. And what's the major message of Tisha B'Av? When you hear people talking about Tisha B'Av, the more talks about Tisha B'Av, what's the classic story that's told for why there was a destruction of the temple? Yeah, Titus and Nebuchadnezzar, they were shyam. There's no doubt about that. Okay? Nebuchadnezzar is a bad guy, and we know that. The Babylonians were bad guys. The Romans, Titus, is a Russia, and he got paid for being a Russia. He died a horrible death. And the Romans also were, were, were pretty well looked upon negatively. But then, then they had other Romans actually connected well with the Jewish leadership and so forth. But the fact is, when you really look at the Corbin bias, where does, it, where, where does the onus fall in terms of Corbin bias? What are you talking about exactly, Harold? Kamsa and Bar Kamsa is the story of the Horbin. How we acted terribly. From our sins. Now, you go around saying that in terms of the Holocaust. A rabbi, a rabbi say that in terms of the Holocaust. And the fact is, we look at it and say, how could you say that? Was a, there was a major rabbi who said that you have to look at the Holocaust. And it's because of our sins that, that this happened. Wait a sec. You can't say that. N nowadays? You can't say that personally? The Holocaust because of our sins? You can't talk about that. But you can talk about Tishbab like that. Now the truth is is that in, in, when Tishbab happened, they could talk that way because of the way that they were and they understood that there was Sinas Chinim and so forth. There were tremendous issues. But afterwards, when they talked about it, there was enough removal from the personal situation that they were able to look at and say, okay, what are we supposed to learn from this? We're too close to the Holocaust to have any type of idea like that. So what we can have is a day to commemorate it from a secular perspective. Okay? We can look at it and say, listen, this is something we need in order to deal with this tragedy. We have to commemorate it. We have to feel the pain, almost like a shiva. We have to go through mourning. The fact is, is that's still something for ourselves. But in terms of making it a religious date, that enta that entails understanding what it means to be a historical date within the Jewish within the Torah calendar, and that involves thinking about what the lesson is that I'm supposed to take home. What am I supposed to walk away from? And the truth is, in a certain way, and this is where you could, there was a Stephen from, from Barry 200 years later, because sometimes you're too close to really figure out the messages. So the truth is, there's two types of remembering. There's remembering of the historical event because it personally affected you. And that's something you, 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 a human being needs to deal with tragedy in one's life. We understand that. And the Jewish in terms of marking a date on the calendar and giving it religious significance, that was a uh, that's what happened at Hanukkah, where they thought into the future. Now, this is also something that's tied to Yom Ha'atzmaut. The fact that we can celebrate a historical event, yes, we can celebrate our birthdays, we can celebrate historical events, and it was a and it was a historical event we want to remember, right? We want to remember our anniversaries. We want to remember. Things, good things happening to us, and so forth. And that's a, and, and that's the psychological thing. But to state that this event and the commemoration of this event has religious significance, that we have to figure out what we're supposed to learn from it. In terms of re-experiencing it, it's not a historical event. Jewish holidays are not historical events. We don't mark history from a Jewish perspective. What we do is, is try to re-experience the lesson that was tied into that event. Okay?
today. Okay, and we try to figure out what we can learn from this event in terms of the future, in terms of what happens. And that's really, and that, and that we learned from Hanukkah. Yeah, it was a great celebration. We got the Greeks out of, out of, out of, out of Israel. But then the fact was, okay, and it was a great miracle and so forth. Okay, but what does it mean a hundred years later? What am I taking away from this? Okay, and that's something that's happening. In a certain way, um, in a certain way, that gives greater a greater value to this. I think that in certain ways, I mean, Yom Ha'atzmaut still has tremendous um, value because we're still going through the fight for independence in a certain way. Okay, we're not totally. Um, um, you know, free in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of being, uh, being, uh, um, in terms of having defeated our enemies. Okay, in a certain way, um, Eretz Yisrael is still under, um, still under, uh, under attack. And the point is, on Yom Ha'atzmaut, you remember how we were, the whole process started and so forth. But I think one of the things we're doing in Yom Ha'atzmaut is, is also recognizing that we're still in the fight. And we have you know, to recognize that we still have to defend Eretz Yisrael and fight for Eretz Yisrael. And there's values in that. Okay? Harold, do you want to say something? Is that, uh... Okay, one second. Harold wants... Uh, by the way, if anyone wants to say something, either text me that you want to say something, put it like in chat, or raise your hand if you're in the video and I'll try and catch you. Okay, Harold wants to say something. The modern state of Israel recognizes its connection to the Holocaust. Every graduated class in the, in the offices in the, in the military will go to Yad Vashem. In the graduating class, we spend one day at Yad Vashem. Yes. I, fact. The, the fact is, is that, that that's very true. Um, the connection between... The truth is, is that it's, it's interesting in terms of the connection between Eretz Israel and the Holocaust. The the the, uh, the the question exists is um, I, I'm not sure how to develop. The point is what I read was that there were some issues of some sabras back in the 50s with the Holocaust because they felt that and, and there was this attitude that uh, that the Jews um, went like sheep. What eventually happened is, is people understood the strength of the Jews in their own way. One of the ways that happened. Called the Holocaust in the seventies. I think it was called the Holocaust. It was a big series in the seventies, and one of the things that really got people, in terms of how the Jews acted, is 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 that they they basically maintained their dignity, and that was something that that, that, that drove the Nazis crazy. The um, what what what? One of the, and this came across in that in that in that series that the Nazis tried to tried to make to make the Jews act undignified or, 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 or like anyone of right and the Jews still maintained their dignity in their in their behavior even though they were Rahman's son going to their death and so forth. The fact is is that it, it drove it drove people crazy. Listen, um, I, I'm going to say something. Sort of, I guess, in a certain way, it's it's sort of <sighs> says something nice about my family. We were um, my my father's brother, who I'm named after. My name is Binyamin Chaim. Binyamin was my father's father, and um, Chaim was his brother. Uh, well, both of them, Rahman son, perished in Auschwitz. My father was at a And at the table he was sitting at, there was a guy there who sort of heard his last name was Hecht, and he said, yeah, yeah, in Auschwitz, there was a Hecht. I wonder if there's any relationship. And they started, to, started talking to my father, and it turned out to be my uncle. Okay, 
and and my father was this this is you know he was talking to a person who who would have been the last person that he would, he would speak to in terms of his 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 brother being alive because he died in Auschwitz and he said and he said about my uncle he said you know your uncle your brother no matter what they did he never ate trafe he didn't he just wouldn't eat now that that's that's a remarkable statement now the truth is i'm not going to get into halakhic issues or whatever but the fact is is from the stories i've heard about my uncle he he you know my my family was vicious or chassidim i mean my father came from vicious or chassid place and my and my uh And learning and so forth, but the fact is, is that he went to Auschwitz. He wouldn't eat, and the point is, is that uh, you know, halachically there's issues, whatever. But the point is, is that that's a matter of a certain level of dignity. You know, I, I tell that story with a tremendous amount of. Uh, It's hard for me to tell that story, but the fact is, is we don't... Okay, hey, David, one second. Um, what we, what we don't recognize is that side of it. So what happened was, is from what I understand, there was certain attitudes of certain Israelis to, to the Holocaust that they should have fought it, and that's why the Warsaw Ghetto became the big thing and so forth, and why Yom HaShoah was sometimes tied to the Warsaw Ghetto. But the point is, is that... They didn't understand, and then and then the Eichmann trial came, and they understood the significance of the Yom HaShoah, and they understood th this aspect of what it meant to be, uh, how the Jews survived in Europe. It wasn't just the Holocaust. There's something I read, I just read recently, from some Holocaust survivor who argued for why Tisha B'Av really should be it, because, the, it, because what motivated the tragedy of the the anti-Semitism throughout Europe. There was hatred of Jews. Now it became, you know, crazy under Hitler. But the point is, is that this is something that was felt about Jews um, throughout the Middle Ages. And the truth is, we're seeing it again. And and the point is, is that, is that when you think in terms of Tisha B'av, it connects us with all the Jews throughout history in terms of. That in terms of anti-Semitism, but on the other hand, both on a personal level and because of the tra because of the horror of the tragedy, Holocaust does stand out. out. But my point was, my point is, it's for something to make it to the Jewish calendar. You have to walk away with a lesson, which means you have to see your involvement. David, do you want to say something? David. Are you on mic? Can some? <coughs> what? I'm sorry. There is some noise in the background. There's some. Okay, Harold, are you you're muting again? Okay, it's okay. off now. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, David, did you? Did you want to say something? No. Okay. No, that was okay. It. okay. Good. Okay. So that, anyways, my my point is is the reason I wanted to talk about this is that I think that in Jewish history we've seen two different types of marking of events. There's no, from what I've read in terms of Europe, when tragedies occur. stay within the city as long as it was felt within the city. Whether that was a few generations or whatever, the point is historical events do affect us in terms of our personality and especially as we are connected to them. And the point is, is we have to understand how they affect us and so forth. But to make it in terms of the religious calendar, 
What occurs is, is that it's not just simply learning about the history. It's, it's understanding what the lesson is or the connection is to you today. And that's sometimes not an easy connection. Okay? Um, and, and the reason I use the, the Kurban is that the idea of saying that is because of our, of our sins that we, that we suffered the, 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 the destruction of the temple, you have to understand how powerful a statement that is. The point is, is if you would have said that to the Jews while they were suffering in, 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 in uh, Yerushalayim, or if you would have said that to the, the you know, with, in response to Masada, Forget about it. Okay, this is a tremendous tragedy. There's an idea, but th but years later, when you think back on it, the way you learn a lesson from it is by saying, "Okay, how can I improve? What can I do?" You know, there's an interesting book I was once reading about about successful entrepreneurs. It says a sense so set, the, that most people think that the key to being a good a good boss is you, you blame someone else. It says the real successful entrepreneurs, that's on, and, you know, basically, okay, about to make a joke about Trump, but okay, we won't go there. But the fact is, the real successful entrepreneurs try to figure out what can I do? What did I do? Because the point is, you take responsibility. You learn what you can from it. And that, and that really is what marks the Jewish calendar. The point is, is that there are times in history where you, you know, it's very much tied to the concept of Avelis, for example. You know, there's an interesting issue in terms of Avelis. Avelis goes from Shiva to Shloshim to, 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 to the year and so forth. But there's an interesting question. Why is Yisker on a holiday? A holiday is a Yom Simchaseim. A holiday is a day of celebration. Okay, so, so how can you have Yisker on a holiday? So, there is, so the point is, Yisker actually began with Yom Kippur. And its movement to a holiday wasn't, wasn't so simple. We talked about this before. But the point is, when a person says Yisker on a holiday, there's another type of, of feeling towards the past. You feel some type of appreciation that you were able to have this person in your life. And you value that person. And therefore, in the Yisker, yeah, there's a sadness the person's not there, but there's also a happiness in the level that you had a relationship with that person. And that's what makes Yisker part of the celebration of, uh, 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 of, uh, of Yontif. And it's also the reason why in the first year, when a person is in Avelis, they don't stay in for Yisker, because they're too close to the event. Okay, Harold, I'll get to you in a sec. What I'm trying to say is, is that there's a movement there. There's the idea of a tragedy, we relate to it on a personal level, and we mark it, and so forth and so forth. That's how we mark history. It's also how we mark festival days. But the fact is, to make it into a Jewish event that we want to mark in posterity in history, that has to be something where we see the continuous value of the idea that we have to keep every, every year and reconsider. On Purim, we think we should be thinking about what we learn it for him and how we bring that into our life. On Pesach, we do the same thing. In Tishwa, we try to figure out what can I do to make things better. This is, this is what makes something a religious day. It's not just remembering history, it's actually learning that we have to learn. Okay, Harold, you want to say something? You have to unmute. You have to unmute, Harold. In terms of Zachor, it's a prime component from the Torah, right? Yes. It's mentioned about 169 times. Yes. So that's a major, major thing in Jewish history, in Jewish survival, is Zachor. Okay. We're obligated and commanded numerous times. That's a major component to remember. Yeah, and, and, and all I'm adding to that is, is what's Zachor really about? Is it just remembering? Or is actually understanding the lesson you are to take into the future, right. and and the truth is is that we we, we mark Zohar in terms of Purim and Amalek, 
The point of the matter is, is that that support is not just a uh, Malik did something back then. It's the fact that we have to recognize this is a continuous problem, and we have to know how to respond to it. Okay, and that and that's true, and that's that's that that's part of it. And that and 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 then. And by the way, I, I should mention that there's another issue in terms of establishing a religious state today is that who can establish it today? Okay, the, pro the, the problem that exists is, is that, yeah, we don't have a good answer. Good question. But that's, but that's, but that's what I, I think what I'm trying to say. Zahor is not just remember, like, you know, it's, it's what can I take away with it? Okay? Anyone? Uh, uh, okay. Is that okay? But you're right. Harold, you're right. Zahor is an important idea within Jewish thought. Okay? And you're right. You're right. I wasn't trying to take away from that. Okay. Any other? Anyone else want to say something? Or <coughs> Okay. So that's it?